This is where you upload and organize all your photos as well as custom clip art in preparation for flowing into your book. First up, we'll look at candids, okay? You can see that we have folders for the different candid photos that are in the software. The folders are organized by default according to the sections in the book. So when we made a section called field trips, it automatically made a folder called field trips. So kind of the whole idea and the best practice is to fill up the field trips folder with photos that you'll flow into the field trips section of the book, okay? So that's kind of the out of the box way that's provided for you when you set up your sections on the ladder. In addition to that, you can also click on new folder and create your own photo folders. Okay, so there's no reason to stick to the standard structure. You can certainly customize and expand it in a way that works for you. To upload photos into our new favorites folder, we'll go ahead and just click the upload button. The uploader appears, we can click add files, and we just happen to have a folder of all of our yearbook photos organized right here. So let's just go ahead and I'll just select all and I'll click okay. Basically what you can see, I've got 63 files, 544 megabytes, elapsed time, time remaining. It's gonna upload them uh, based on the amount of bandwidth you have more than one at a time. The basic file format is RGB jpeg or ping files so those are fine the the time you want to use a ping file you're uploading clip art you have a transparent background things like that other than that rgb jpegs are the typical output of a digital camera so there's nothing else you need to do to support files and you can just upload right into the software this year the software also supports heic files from apple devices okay you can also see a toolbar along the top of the photo contact sheet here with some additional functionality. So let's take a look at this. We've got select, select all, select use, select unused. Okay, so I can select all the photos that are used in the book. I can select all the photos that haven't been used in the book. Okay, pretty handy feature. Uh, I can deselect them as well. Okay, I can copy photos. So let's say I wanna click a couple of photos here, just click to select, and I can copy them into a different folder, okay? I can also move them into a different folder, okay? I can delete them and I can edit them. Go ahead and select a photo and click edit. And it pulls up an edit photo dialog. So right here in the middle, we have a preview of our image. Over on the left, we have some different corrections and the thumbnail actually shows the correction. Flip horizontal, for example. Okay, flip vertical. I can crop. I've got full undo, redo, and then revert to the original image here. If I click on the adjustment tab, I've got some more uh, basic adjustments so I can make the image darker, I can make the image lighter, more contrast, less contrast, sharpness, auto fix. Okay, I've also got some different effects here. This duotone effect is really nice. I've got all kinds of different duotone color combinations that I can apply to my image. And then I've also got blur, pixelate, uh, posterize effects and things like that. Okay, if you wanna save your image, go ahead and click save. It'll always make a copy. Next, let's take a look at the portraits, okay? We'll click on the portraits tab right below the candidates here. And you'll see that we already have a few folders of portraits uploaded into the system. Portraits get imported using a feature called portrait import right here. Before you start importing your portraits, you need to have your full set of portraits along with an index file. The index file is called index.txt. It's a text file provided along with your portraits from your portrait photographer. The index file conforms to the PSPI standard for uploading your portraits along with all the data, including student names, teacher name, homeroom, and so forth. Once you've gathered your portraits, you'll click on portrait import, and the first step will be to locate that index file, and then the software will walk you through four steps for importing your portraits. 
you'll end up with all of your portraits uploaded and organized automatically into folders. I'll do a separate video that walks through this process step by step for the sake of time. Uh, a lot of times the portrait photographers will do these automatically before they turn over the software to the school. Okay, so that's portraits. The only time you'd use the upload feature here would be if you have an extra student that came in to school later on, you just want to quickly add them to the class or something like that. A couple other things up here, I can click print. If I click print, I can select a class and I can get a proof of the entire class for the purpose of proofreading, okay, making sure everything's correct, making sure all of the students uh, are represented and so forth. And it's just something you can print out in the classroom. And just like candidates, we've also got a search up here, and then we've got also got the ability to copy and move portraits, delete, and so forth into different folders. What's unique about the portraits in the toolbar is we've also got this edit metadata button here that gives you access to all the metadata. The metadata is included in the index file. It could include period, teacher name, grade, job title for staff. All kinds of information can be available here. You can view the information here. You can also modify and add the information here. Okay, so this is just a full editable view of your actual index file. Also, you can click on the little preview icon next to any portrait, and you can move through and see all of the portraits as well as all of their metadata. If the teachers are in the same folder, you can check this box to specify that this is a teacher portrait. Later on in the portrait wizard, this checkbox will override the alphabetical order and always put this teacher in the first position. If you have multiple teachers in a class, you can add an additional teacher portrait and also give them a priority, which determines the order that they flow onto the pages. Any changes that get made here to metadata, to portraits that have already been flowed onto pages will automatically be updated on those pages. Also, if you've already flowed these portraits onto a page and on the page you make a change to the data, that will be updated here as well. And that really covers the portrait functionality. We'll move on down to photo post. Photo post is an optional feature that's a really great way for yearbook advisors to collect additional candid photos from friends and family, community members for potential inclusion in the yearbook, okay? So here's the way that it works. First thing you might wanna do is make a new folder. So click on new folder up here. And let's say we'll call this Halloween party. They had a, a Halloween party at school and there were a couple of parents there that were taking lots and lots of photos. And we'd like to get our hands on some of those for the yearbook. So I'll make this folder and then I can go ahead and do a couple things. I can click invite and I can type in the email addresses of those parents and they'll get a message asking them to submit photos to the yearbook. That message will contain a link they won't be able to see the yearbook, any other photos or anything else. It's totally secure. They'll be able to upload their photos into this folder, okay? The other thing that you can do is just copy the link. And so if you copy the link, it just copies it to my clipboard. And now you can just paste it into an email to share. And again, when they click on the link, they'll be taken back to this folder where they can click upload and upload their photos. Once a parent has uploaded photos, you can see them in here. You can view them and you can view the notes that the parent may have entered about the image. And then you can decide if you want to use it in the yearbook software, in which case you'll move it from photo post into a candid or a portrait folder. Okay, so that's how easy it is. A private, a secure feature, really great way to obtain lots of extra candidates. And it's really flexible in terms of the way that you set it up. The next one down here is Google Drive, okay? Google Drive is another way that you can get photos into the software. When I choose Google Drive, it'll ask me to log in through Google Drive, so I'll confirm my login. It's gonna ask me to confirm that Photo Product Creator, which is our software, wants to access your Google account. So I'll go ahead and allow that. 
And now all of my photos in my Google account will start loading into the software. I can view them here and I can copy them into a folder to use in the software. Another great way to obtain lots and lots of candidates for use in your yearbook. Okay, finally, moving on down the list, the last tab we have here is ClipArt. And ClipArt allows you to create folders and upload your own custom ClipArt. The ClipArt that you load here could be mascots, your school logos, and things like that. And it will appear right alongside the normal ClipArt folders on the advanced design page. Okay, so another cool feature that allows you to customize, add your own clip art. If you use the software in subsequent years, you can add to this library of clip art. It'll be here the next year and the next. And that really covers all the functionality on managed photos. Check out the user guide for more information.